Gods of our planet radio. Planet Radio. This is the Off Planet Radio podcast. Something, wow, I haven't done this for a while now. I've been doing a live TV show and putting things out in a, sort of a video format. But I've wanted to get back to doing the core of this, which is audio. And, uh, well, you know, things have a way of uh, kicking you in the butt sometimes. And I have somebody on the line with me tonight that she has been just the most amazing person at kicking my butt over the years and i am so happy to have her back i want to say hello again to chris holly well hi randy i guess that's my fate in life (laughs) to to kick your butt not that i enjoy it or anything but here we go or maybe we're just friends and friends are honest that's what we do that's what we do chris and it's been Wow, it's been quite a long time since you and I have done anything together, and a lot of that's due to the fact that we both have had to deal with our physical issues. You've had uh, recuperation of some things with your your voice, with your throat, and uh, I, back about 18 months ago, had a little bout with some infectious issues. So, you know, in that time, we kind of um, went radio silent, but... In the background, you and I have always remained connected, and it is so good to have your voice here again and to be able to sit down and talk to you about pretty much anything you want to talk about tonight. Well, I'll tell you, I'm just grateful to be back, and it is very odd how, you know, we were working together and busy, and it it was just very... I don't believe in coincidence, no. faded, that we both were shot down and just became ill and our, you know, separate things were going on and we couldn't, just couldn't do this, as well as the fact is that we're both feeling better and coming around and back really want, you know, picking up where we left off. But that, that's life. Sometimes you, you know, get a detour thrown in there and you just got to walk it. So in the time that we've been away, obviously the world keeps spinning round and around and around, as the old song goes, and uh, it's it's pretty much it's pretty much a horror show on planet Earth these days. And I mean, I don't want to be grim about this, but as you and I have talked over the years, we really have the sense that that this this planet is just under massive assault from all kinds of forces, and that things have really kind of ramped up in terms of the strange what what are you tracking right now chris in terms of strangeness oddities um or things that you you think you'd like to comment about general or specific well i'll be honest it's more like an insane asylum than it's ever been before i mean as far as i'm concerned everywhere you look on almost any subject people seem I don't know, not in touch with reality, number one. Uh, Number two, I think that we are in for some very tough times because I also think there's forces and control agents in force, not not agents as in uh, uh, control groups or organizations or plans 
or um, uh, a, a, a purposeful, purposeful pushing towards us being completely removed from each other, detached from our own humanity and controlled by technology. And I see that becoming deeper and more problematic every day. And that's something that really frightens me because we can't withstand that too much longer at the speed at which it's happening before we have a total crash of mankind and lose our humanity and become something else. And that something else is going to be ugly and easily controlled. And, you know, that's it. Once you make that turn in the road, I don't think you're coming back. And besides that, we have the insane weather, which may be related to all those things. And just everything you can think of everywhere you look up at is ramped up. Um, People seeing different things, be it creatures, crafts, you know, entities, ghosts, uh, whatever you might, you know, things that we don't know what they are, you know. Yeah, it's kind of, it's It's what I... Crushing down on us. It's what I have called for probably about the last five years, the thinning of the veil. Basically, what we're seeing now is uh, a trajectory into a a period that I I think we've been here before as a race on this planet long, long ago uh, in my studies of ancient literature. But we now have kind of moved into this rather sudden and a very shocking period where things are just I call it heightened contrast that you know remember black and white TVs I know you do and oh, yes the contrast button if you turned it to the left and it went totally white and if you turned it hard to the right it would go totally black but somewhere in the middle of that was what was called contrast the balance between black and white well I am just going to say that the contrast knob has been basically shoved into overdrive at this point, and it's like black and white all over the place, and it's real hard to tell which is which and what is what. But talking about this whole dehumanization thing and noticing, and we've talked about this before, it continues to just really rankle me the level to which people are now attaching themselves to machines specifically phones and computers um, essentially removing themselves from not only uh, contact with other human beings Chris but contact with their own environment at a time when their environment is becoming hostile uh, you know, you just said something, Randy, that really struck me. The, the thinning of the veil, as you always put it, wouldn't it be interesting if the reason we are being addicted to our devices and not paying attention to our surroundings, not even noticing if it's black or white around us because we're staring and controlled by technology, is purposely being done so we do not do not watch and see what is happening around us as that veil thins and as things are coming at us or coming through or standing right there and you know one way to keep us herded together and not paying attention to that is to like you know when you shake keys in front of a baby Mm -hmm. is to give us something to dangle in front of us that keeps us busy and in our own little tiny bubble so we don't notice what's going on around us quite as much as we would otherwise. Because there used to be a time we were all outside looking around, paying attention, understood what the sky looked like, what it's not supposed to look like, and could tell the difference. And today, people do not seem to be able to judge that. In fact, I think you could put a big foot in the middle of the mall and no one would notice. <laughs> Probably not, especially if you handed a mobile phone. It would look perfectly right. normal. Right. Perfectly normal. You know, you just said something, though, and it kind of follows up on something you and I were talking about before we, uh, we went on to the recording tonight. 
and that has to do with the shifts specifically in weather I'll call it atmospheric conditions and stratospheric conditions and what you and I were talking about the fact that you and I are very similar people in some ways we both are very sensitive to shifts in the atmosphere shifts in light shifts in temperature and oddities of the environment uh, we were just talking for instance here we are it is um, well it's the first day of June and yet the weather today feels oddly like another season completely but most people are not aware of this um, they're not really looking around and paying attention to their environment in a, in a meaningful way and going wait a minute this weather is just strange and it's almost like one they're not paying attention and two their memories are being shortened I, I don't know what it is. I know that like, like if I say to you, we were outside, let's say today, and I said to you, listen, do you hear that? That you wouldn't be, you know, you would say, yeah, it sounds like fall or it sounds like winter. You're right. You get it right away that everything was different. Most people are just numb to things. Even when you tell them like here on Long Island, we have thousands of fish that are shoring up dead along the coastlines. So it's like something you've never seen before. All these dead fish all along our beaches. Well, that's not normal. It's on the news. They're telling everybody, I'm panicking. I live on an island. This is the water that surrounds me. And they're saying, oh, it could be this certain tide and it takes <clears throat> and chokes all the oxygen out of the water so all the fish die and I'm going wait a minute what are you talking about and you know how is this going to affect this I mentioned it to a few relatives and things I was talking to today and two people on, on the internet and they were like uh huh and the next thing they you know were more interested in what the Kardashians are going to do that amazes me <clears throat> I just told you something that is frightening and you, you don't care. I would have the same reaction when I would talk to them about what's going on with the floods in Texas or the terrible tornadoes across the country that are bizarre and I don't ever remember a time like that. Or I'd say to people, you know, this could all be what's going on could all be because we're about to flip the, the poles finally or and God knows what that's going to be like as we continue into it. Or what if Yellowstone blows? And I get like blankness in return when I try to discuss these things. Not only do people not know what I'm talking about, they're not even concerned or interested enough to say, what are you talking about? No, they, they don't even go care. Blank and turn off. And that's frightening. I'm like waving goodbye to my humanity, to mankind, to what makes us human is gone. And we are being trained and all that is needed next is to be hooked up physically to our devices. And that's it, people. You're done. You'll be brainwashed, controlled, told what to think, what to buy, what to say. What to, what to do every minute of your life and if you don't think so do nothing and just keep going as you are and see if I'm right or wrong the best thing people need to do now is understand the machines that they are addicted to are machines that were built just to help them you and I use them in our work but I do not live or die by it I also spend a lot of time with my family with my husband outside with the flowers yes, on the deck yes, yes. worrying about what I'm going to shove in my face next to me <laughs> <laughs> and things like that you know well like, there's you know, life and there's the joys of life I mean right. uh, those are all part of the natural human uh, existence experience on this planet but Chris you know this whole thing with the machines I remember after 2012 and you may remember I did ton of shows on the Mayan calendar and Ascension and Pole Shift and all the things that were associated with 2012 
And in the ensuing years, I noticed that that subject matter all kind of tapered off. I had, some people were relieved and some people were, frankly, kind of depressed that the planet didn't just blow up. But I recently had somebody ask me what I felt was the state of human ascension. And I said, well, it's, it's non-existent. I mean, there are people out there who are on an individual consciousness trajectory, but I don't see broad-scale consciousness evolution going on right now. In fact, it appears to be going backwards. And it ties into these machines. And one of the things that um, you and I have talked about over the years is psychic phenomena. And I know we, we've talked several times. We've done interviews with people. One of the things that I would expect to see in evolution of the human consciousness would be a higher sensitivity to psychic phenomena. What I am seeing is the complete opposite. We can't even tell the weather without picking up a phone and having an app now. Um, we don't seem to be able to do much of anything without punching in, being online, talking to your Facebook friends, Twittering, um, t texting. It, it appears as though the human consciousness is being seized by these and I'll just call them, they're horrid machines anymore. I, I'm desperately trying as hard as I can <clears throat> these days to distance myself from overuse of these machines. Well, I agree with every single syllable you, you just said. I don't, know, I don't have a cell phone. Do not own one. I'm, you know, sad. I have to have Skype and uh, a a uh, you know a cable phone in my house, but I have to to work and to communicate. I do not. I have a laptop that I use only to type on, and I have my big computer, which I'm talking to you on now, to work on. That's it. I refuse to be controlled, and not only is it that all the things you said, they have are being trained not to communicate by way of Twitter and all the Instagrams and all the other nonsense because they do not ever have a conversation. They have a one-line communication or an emoji. They oh. do not speak <laughs> to each other. There is never emojis. emojis. Oh. oh, my God. They do not have a conversation together where they say, what do you think about this? or that outrages me or it isn't it's all one liners and it's all to be cute and get attention basically but there's no thought process behind anything everything is knee jerk one statement and that's it and they don't know what's going on in the world they don't understand how things work in the world they don't understand how things once were which you can kind of judge how things might be all of that's lost and they are kept in control under the thumb in command by way of these addicted devices and they are being taught not to think well if you don't think and you can't reason out anything a problem and everything is one sentence and then you stop and that's it and that's how you're living your life that's going to then go into the decisions you make in your job which is pretty obvious you can't even go to a drive-in window and get what you ordered you can try but I promise you when you drive away and open the bag it's always a surprise um, <laughs> and oh, I mean yeah. where I live always a surprise Yeah. yeah. Um, you hope there's food in there you know at least um, you you have to go back 20 times if you have something done because it's done let's face it not well um you, you can't get people to have a conversation with you they all want to sit and look at their phones even when they're supposed to be over and having dinner with you or to get this sitting and they'll or swiping looking at pictures selfies of themselves well you're sitting in front of me i know what you look like i don't want to look at your phone pictures put it down talk and they are clumsy in conversation now and mm -hmm. they don't know facts they're very let's say it ignorant and it's self-imposed now the schools the kids have cell phones in school they can carry these things with them they're also stuck on computers in school 
what does that tell you? That tells you that we are being taken away from one another. We are being stopped from your communica- communication, which is going to end family, love, um, um, any kind of community thing, any type of religious gatherings that people might do. All of that's going to be by the way- wayside. And once they take and divide us in the fashion that they are, it'll be next to nothing to control us. And if they say, okay, line up, you're all going to get chipped or I'm going to take and mainline you right into this, you know, telephone, computer thing. And every day you have to look at it every 90 seconds. I can promise you that's what the people will do. And it's frightening. And it's only a few steps away. I also saw today on the Internet, this looked like a big, horrible tiger monster frightening big running machine that acted like a big wild beast yes. and they showed it running across a, a, a floorway and it f- scared me to death this I thing mean, is being tested they, I think up at MIT if I'm not at mistaken MIT. Yeah, yeah. Absol- now I don't want that running after me because I was bad and this is where this is all going but you can't try to sit down with someone addicted to their stuff and tell them they get mad at you and they get nasty. And I have to say to myself, is that been programmed into you to have that reaction? Because that's not normal. So I, I, I don't know what's going on, who's doing it and why it's being done so quickly. And, you know, part of me worries. Well, is this because we're going to go through this whole flip or something much worse and they know it's coming at us and they are getting people ready to control them easily could that possibly be why this is being done i I don't know but it's awful but i think the masks are coming off i mean the evil were clearly now just overtly evil and because the people were dumbed down they don't have the ability to discern it anymore um the transhumanist agenda the uh, movement towards these mechanized biological machines that will ultimately be worse than the beasts of the field are all things that people are having a hard time perceiving of because they're immersed in uh, fantasy on television, fantasy and movies that's not real. If yes. you, you know, you look at you look at what they're able to do now with. Um, computer generated imagery on film and it is virtually indistinguishable from real life um it's fact it's very hard to tell anymore what's real in a film or what has been conjured up inside of a a a cpu and i i think the important distinction here is that we're being separated from our survival mechanisms you know, if there's a central theme that runs through this whole conversation, Chris, and I guess this is what we were supposed to talk about tonight, it's that we're being separated from our true selves. Our intuitive, psychic, natural side has a connection to the planet, has a connection to other human beings, and has a connection to our internal spiritual selves. These, this is the assault on the human at every level now. Yeah. It's like they're trying to turn mankind off, humans off. Uh, it, it's it's very, very disconcerting to me, and I, I, I don't understand it, but I see it fully happening, and it's happening fast and quick and, you know, way too, way too easily. And also, don't forget that they, the, the powers that be, and at this point, I give up who it is or what it is or why it is but there is a power that is behind all of this um they learned very easily we humans can be easily controlled herded and and kept in line in chaos and in the case of the subjects we talk about the unknown it's very simple to do you just take and you put out a whole bunch of media garbage, and some of it is truth. They'll tell you, 
yes, there's a big craft that was seen over here or there, and they're all over the world, and they are doing these things, and that seems to be true. And the very next minute, you tune into a sci-fi total fantasy movie with, you know, aliens of all types that just seem, you know, logical to people that they can be in the same area and not worry about bacteria and, and and the environment is good for all and you see this big Star Trek, Star Wars grand film and that then makes them get confused with they were just told what's real and then you go to another TV show that has a bunch of crazy people running around in the woods looking for UFOs with lasers and shotguns and they're just so silly you, you want to slop them one and then you'll have some poor guy on another show that is trying to tell you some truth so all you have to do is take one big pot throw it all in there and stir and nobody knows what the hell is going on and nobody has to do anything about it no questions have to be answered no disclosure of anything has to even be approached no care or warning to the poor slobs that are going to face these things perhaps one cold night by themselves because nobody's going to believe them anyway and life goes on so we went along with being fooled like silly little monkeys at n and never asked, wait a minute, you're telling us one thing here, then another thing there, then is this guy lying? Oh, but I love Star Wars movies. And they just can't distinguish what's what and what isn't. And that seems to be the story right now of our lives we are lost it is how we came to the place where you and I and many other what I'll consider to be honest researchers and experiencers <clears throat> have been beating our heads into rocks over for decades now yep why is it so hard for people to understand that these craft are in our skies these beings are on our planet. The, there have been abductions, there have been contacts, there has been cooperation with our military, with our governments by these beings, and yet no one in the mainstream, certainly not the media, the media will be the last people to ever get this story, believes that it's true. And you know, it, it has been certainly, I think, for the last seven or eight years since I've sort of kind of semi-disclosed my own experiences and also done a lot of shows on the subject um, I, I've, I've scratched my head continuously to go why is it that there are people that see this and so many others who don't I just this weekend saw this movie it's called um Jupiter Ascending. It's done by the Wachowskis who did the Matrix movies. And I have to tell you, this movie, I hope people watch this movie, not for the entertainment's sake. I don't watch movies to be entertained. I watch movies because I think they tell you things. This movie is actually frighteningly accurate in its p depiction of alien abduction. And there's a, a point in the movie where the major character, who's named Jupiter, watches a woman that she works for, a wealthy woman, being abducted and being uh, basically put into uh, a sleep state and hooked up to a machine while she's in front of her in the room and she reaches up to look at them and she takes a picture with her phone. Later on in the narrative of the movie, this other this uh, character who comes to rescue her who is from another world tells her in a casual conversation he says you don't understand something they come here they do what they're going to do they can wipe out memories with a snap of a finger and nobody will notice he said they don't get everybody but they don't need to because the rest of humanity doesn't believe those who have seen it and he said you for instance have a picture on your phone that you have no idea 
where it came from. And when I, I got to tell you, it was one of those moments in the movie when my heart leaped into my mouth. I was like, holy crap. They got it. They got it right. Yeah. They actually, they actually do. And, and uh, you know, I could go on a tyrant now about, about abduction, but there are many people abducted, and not all the same exact way. There's all right. different ways. Right. There's different, different species taking us for different reasons. But it's all basically the same. You don't want any part of it. They come take you against your will, do whatever they want. You don't remember it because their memory will swipe you, and 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 you're put back and sometimes not in too good a condition. And as I was telling you before we started talking tonight, that I was um, it was suggested to me that some people come back a little bit more bruised and beaten than others because perhaps they fight more. And the more resistance you put up, the more resistance they put out to control you and you get hurt. They do seem to try to fix everything and return you fixed, but they sometimes do a poor job at it. Now, I want to get into something here because I'm having, you know, I always have trouble with this. And it's, we're talking about the memory thing. I believe abductees have the memory taken from them. So it isn't something you can recall. The pieces of it that you do recall, which most abductees have flash right. memories, very quick, where you startle yourself at, at what you see in your mind and, and recall. The rest of it's gone. So this is, means it's not there. So it drives me insane when people go to become hypnotized to have their memories brought back because one, they're not there. There's nothing there for them to go get. That's number one. Number two, if anything is left in there, they should leave it alone because if the person did recall it, they may have a heart attack, go insane or just drop dead. And number three, there isn't a human alive walking on this earth that knows what has been done to these people or how. And the last thing we need is, you know, a little mouse in there messing with our brains so that maybe they trigger something and nothing's left. And you end up a vegetable or totally, you know, incoherent or not able to speak anymore or crazy or dead. So, you know, don't go messing with stuff like that. You don't know what happened. And I can't get that through to people. Oh, no, they had a regression. No, you didn't. Because there was nothing in there, most likely, to regress or remember. Yeah. But, yeah. but they, they, they don't get that. They didn't say that they made you subconsciously... Uh, uh, make those memories go into your subconscious no they took them and the reason I say that is I've talked to more than one person who suffered an abduction where they took a little bit too much and they also don't remember their wedding day or when they were 15 or you know the first time they smoked a cigarette that was taken too or their grandfather I mean things like that they're gone they took them they burned them out of your brain you're not going to remember them don't go to a hypnotist that could maybe finish you off because they have no idea what they're doing not with an abductee you and I both know that in that state of mind there is a level of suggest suggestibility where in the wrong hands or maybe even in the right hands I mean you can have an ethical hypnotherapist and still have somebody who inadvertently triggers false memory syndrome or implants memories or pushes absolutely. too hard against the barriers of the memory absolutely as I said they don't know what they're dealing with they don't know what was done to these people and they also don't know what was put into these people and it could be a power that they could unleash that would cause damage to everyone around them they are clueless and you cannot you don't go where you don't understand. You can't just blindly walk off a cliff and then be surprised 
when you fall. <laughs> Well, this so, was the know. problem. This was the problem that I had with people like the late Dolores Cannon, was the romanticizing of regression and then using these regression experiences to state that these were not hostile experiences. We had signed a soul contract for this. You know what I say to that, don't you? Bullshit. Right. A big Sorry, pile of I'm it. I'm not buying that. I'm not buying that. You know, right. I, I didn't agree to that. You didn't agree to that. Certainly nope. not under some of the horrible things that you experienced over the years and that I've heard other people talk about. And yes, maybe there's a mercy in not remembering this stuff, but damn it, uh, dredging that up without the proper nurturing, which I think that's something a person has to do their own healing. You know, I really think that what you're supposed to remember, you'll remember and that there's a mercy in not remembering certain things. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> I talk to the 12 and then 6 um, real-time abduct yes. abductees about this subject. And all of them are, as I am, more afraid of the human do-gooder hypnotist than they are of another encounter with the aliens because <laughs> they know they at least were coming back alive from the abductions and really you know horrified what might happen to them or where their brain could be left or or you know they could continue and somehow turn on and the rest of their their memories be wiped out not to to and also i want to throw in that these people all had a little jolt to their um, intelligent quotation and 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 quota and um, they didn't want that adjusted back down either because it was helpful for them in their jobs and getting you know through school and things like that it made life easier and these are things that although horrible was at least helpful to them to deal with the things that they had to go through and not one of them you're absolutely right no one wants or invites this into their life and if people think that they want it it's because they truly do not understand it they have no idea what they're they're they're, they're asking for and they have no concept of what they're dealing with because they give it all these human characteristics and and thinking and throw in lots of camp compassion and then they'll tell you well uh they know somebody and they got the meaning of life from the aliens or really well what was it isn't it interesting <laughs> <laughs> that's good wow i didn't have that experience how about you <laughs> no do, do you hear that yeah no here do we have a noise on the line? Oh my gosh, you don't... It, it, it's a... Oh no. <laughs> the strangest thing I've ever heard. Okay, it stopped. It was on my end. <clears throat> Maybe a little threat there. But, um... It, it, it didn't it, come back, did it? No, I, I... When you talked, it was there again. Okay, okay that's, that's something, something with my microphone. Then. All right. So anyway, so anyway uh, uh, having said, said uh, can, you, can you hear me? No, you sound like a, a monster. Oh no, oh, no. not not again. again. Okay, 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 let, let me hang, hang up and call you back. Oh yeah, that's awful. Okay. And having changed microphones now, at good grief, who knows what happened there? Why do things work one minute and not and work not the next? That's the weirdest thing in the world. It really is. And you know, and there was so, and so many things we can talk about along these lines. And one of them also is we, we say none of us asked for this. Not one of us wanted any part of this. But how come it's us and how come other people just never have anything strange happen to them at all? Is it that we have an ability to see more, feel more? that gets us picked out in the first place 
or what? You know, I, I have to wonder, why is it that 10 people can go out and stand on a beach and five, five of them see these lights and exactly. know they're spray, yes. and the other ones yeah. looking around, you know, couldn't biting on their corn or the cob and have no, no idea what's going on. It's, it's very interesting. Yeah, I, I, and I think that's just part of the phenomenon, Chris, that we're never really going to understand this side of the veil. <laughs> it's gonna, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, is, it is simply the fact that um, there's a sensitivity. I mean, I consider it a gift, uh, the, the sensitivity this, that I have. You know, sometimes it's not. It's kind of a curse because you're like, you know, I really don't want to know these things. I don't want to feel these things. I didn't want to see that. I didn't want to. I didn't want to experience that. But on the other side of it, it's like um, your your group the uh, of 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 experiencers that you worked with over the years. There are compensations for everything, which I think is just a, a part of the natural law of the universe uh, of compensation. And maybe we did come in switched in a little bit more than the average person, and that's not, I'm not saying that with a bit of conceit, but it appears to me that what is happening is, and this goes back to, I'll tie this together, hopefully. When we were talking earlier about the fact that we are being turned into machines, that we're not engaged in our environment, we're not engaged with our fellow humans, why is it that we are the ones talking about that. Well, it's because we're the most grieved by it. We're the ones that look at that whole thing and we go, wait a minute, I've seen this before somewhere. I mean, that's the sense I have. I have the sense of deja vu about a lot of this stuff, Chris. You know, that's funny. What I say, and I say it to my family and my friends, is that they've been there. This has already happened to them. And that's why they're here messing with us now. And now we're doing the same exact thing. And I truly mean it. I do believe part of our visitors, there's many, I think, from many places and many different reasons. But I think part of them are a species that went down this very road. And now they are probably less biological than machine. And they are losing the ability to keep their biological part. And that's why they are here and taking from us what they need. I think they all are here for their own agendas and taking their own wants and needs from, from us or the planet or whatever. And some, we might just be a school trip for some of them. They fly by and look at the little, you know funny earthlings but it, it's all different kinds of things going on but i do believe part of it is others have already done what we are doing and they're gathering what they can before we go the whole way and again i say to those who, who are waiting saying well i'll we'll just wait here and the alien's going to come down and make me better and take away all my disease and fix everything that's wrong in the world and end war and everything's going to be hunky-dory and uh-uh, no. And give me the meaning of life and tell me the secrets of the universe? No, again. Because if that was going to happen, they would have done it far sooner than now so that we do now have a little bit of technology and could be bothersome. They would have done it already. They yeah. like it the way it is. And they are the ones that keep it the way it is. Stop asking. For God's sakes, people, stop asking your government for disclosure. I know, really. This is absurd. Oh. They, they can't even disclose their own sexual improprieties or their own criminal <laughs> activities like the Clintons do. You know, I, what? You really think that a man who lied to you about where he was born is going to tell you the truth about aliens and UFOs? Really? On what planet does that happen? Yep, right. And also, remember, there's not a damn thing we can do. Not one military force on the face of this earth could 
protect you or go up against or do a thing against alien technology. Aliens don't even have to be near the planet to control you or wipe you out or subdue you. Not at all. So there's nothing your government can do to protect you. There is nothing your government can do to stop it. There is only one thing they can do is agree to whatever the aliens want and how they want it. And obviously, they like it the way it is. They take enough of us to satisfy their needs. They keep some, I'm sure, kill some, I'm sure, and use some and keep putting them back and forth, farm us for, uh, for others. And that's just the fact for life, whether you like it or not. That's the way it is in the cosmos. So, you know, we might, you know, one day advance to their level, but I don't see it happening soon. We'd have to kind of stop killing each other and start working together to get there. And none of us see that happening soon. Amen. So, you know, it's, it's, as you said, we have <laughs> people running our governments that, you know, I really wouldn't even want them cleaning my house. No, no, I wouldn't let them in my house. Them. Do you really want Bill Clinton in your house? Really? No, especially if I had daughters. Oh, but no. But that's another story. Well, you'd have to keep the daughters away from both of them, for what I understand. Okay, that's yep, another yep. subject. That's another subject completely. <laughs> anyway, uh, to kind of, did you have anything else you wanted to say on that particular arc we were on there? Just that. And this, it's summertime, people. Do not go out looking for UFOs alone in isolated areas. No. Because all I can say to you is bye-bye and say bye-bye to the family because you may not be coming back. Yeah, don't go don't go out with Stephen Greer into some swamp in the Carolinas oh, either. Oh, Jesus. Or, you know, it's like, what? What? I, I'm still trying to wrap my head around this whole thing of going out and Greer remembers the guy that said, oh, there are no negative aliens at all. I'm like, really? Really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All it's right. very clear that he's never had a real um, situation to deal with of, of his own. Because if he did, even if it was wonderful, he'd be frightened to death. Because it would be unknown. He'd lucky to be back. And nobody goes unscathed completely. That's a lie. Even if they're fair, you know, really not harmed and everything, they're still frightened to death. I listened to an interview. I'm sorry, I can't remember the man's name. And he wrote a book. He's very intelligent. And he's been taken his whole life. He's never been really harmed. But he said it scares him so that he's so fearful of it that it's hard for him to, to function and live with. That's the right answer. And if you don't get that from a person and they're leading a group and they want to charge you out into the night, guess what? Don't do it. Find another hobby. Yeah, that's not really a good hobby anyway. <clears throat> this kind of segues a little bit into um, an article that you've just published in the last few days. Uh, well, the last, looks like, week as of the date of this broadcast. It's an article on UFO Digest about they're not human, so stop thinking of them that way. L you want to give us a nutshell on that? And by the way, go over to UFO Digest and read the articles there. Chris has a lot of other articles posted there as well. Or just put Chris Holly in any search and you'll find the articles all over, including on my own site. But that's all you have to do is just search on my name and you'll find all the stuff I've written at this point. It's everywhere. But... Um, what I'm trying to get across to people, and it's exactly what we just finished talking about, is stop giving your um, image of aliens a human slant. They're compassionate. They don't want to hurt us. They want to help us. They're kind. They're loving. Um, they're they're going to fix all. All of those things are human qualities. Stop giving them human appearances that they always have two arms, two legs, and a head. That may not be the case. In fact, it might be so horrific or so unusual that you wouldn't even recognize what you were looking at. That might be an alien life form. And especially, do not anticipate they will treat you like a human. They may be bug-like in culture 
and think nothing of biting your head off and and chewing you up um, when they're done with you like a praying mantis does to their own mates or or swallow you whole like a reptile because they're hungry or, uh, you know, eat you because they're carnivorous like we are and we're animals. There's all kinds of things you have to understand. Whatever their culture is, whatever is is the usual for them may have nothing to do with humans feel as normal or right. Their view of right and wrong may be completely different than yours. Of what causes pain or even what pain is for a human, they may not understand. They may not understand family. They may not reproduce in family groups. They may lay eggs or have a hive and one queen or they may just um, uh, divide in half like a large cell and reproduce that way. Stop thinking that you're dealing with a human. You're dealing with something completely unknown that you have no idea what it's like, how it thinks, what is usual for them or what they understand about you. You have to go into this understanding that. It's the biggest, best warning and caution I can give to anyone because otherwise you may be opening yourself up for a very bad fall. And that's why I get very mad at people like the man we just were talking about and others like him that, that make it out like it's, it's terrific. I had an idiot, I'm not going to use his name, because I'm so angry at him, contact me and he's starting this big new group and I can see people are swarming to this idiot and he claims to be a professional that he's not because I went and investigated it all over and the state he's in and it's very easy to, to, to look into. He's not who he says he is. He does not have the degree he says he has. He is a fake and a fraud, and he tells this story that is so ridiculous that I'm embarrassed that any adult would believe him. That if, that a UFOs the size of two or four football stadiums, those are the two different sizes, were hovering 10 feet over his house in a crowded Florida suburb. But nobody else really noticed that something that big over their entire community, except him and his neighbors, his neighbors come out and they looked up at it and his friends came over and they came in the backyard and they looked up at this massive UFO and had a little talk about it. They got in their car and went shopping and he woke up his 10 year old daughter and dragged her outside underneath this huge UFO. So I started to laugh at him. His story was so ridiculous. And it changed from a UFO and aliens to ghosts, men in black, and entities of some unknown source all in one conversation. This man is actually out trying to collect data from people to I don't know what he's doing it for or who he's doing it for. And he also uses as his references that he's working with these amazing big names in in the paranormal years ago of astronauts and writers and things of men that are all in their late 80s and 90s these poor guys don't know what's going on period and this animal is using some of our national heroes to get whatever he's after from people and the people in the paranormal are going for it I, I had a little war with him, and I just stay away. I blocked him. I don't, I don't want anything to do with him. But as long as that goes on, we're all going to stay in the total dark ages about all of this. And boy, oh boy, it, it really annoys me because you know and I know how many other people, not wanting any part of this, are also going to be taken and abused and used and thrown back and nothing's going to be ever done about it. Yeah. Um, you know, and I will say this. Um, if what I understand is correct, I believe that group may have already failed. And if not, my intel on it is that 
uh, a lot of people bolted from that particular scene at some point because I was approached as well. And uh, uh. higher discernment told me just to stay the flip away from them. So thank you know, thank you to that indwelling sense of caution that I had over the whole thing. Um, you know this, and honestly, these this is happening all over the place because the internet makes it so easy. What you basically have now are a bunch. I call them hunters and collectors, and that's exactly yeah. what they are. They aggregate people in groups. And then they begin to work on them. They'll get them in groups and then they'll separate out the weakest and then they'll devour them. And I actually uncovered the same strategy in um, a group of people years ago uh, who were involved as experiencers. And this, there was a similar strategy that was deployed. And I bolted from the group real quick and warned a few people on there that I could get a hold of. You need to get away from this guy because it was uh, he was basically a Christian pastor who was feeding on these people. Mm-hmm. And, and so, I, you know, the warning is out there. Be careful where you aggregate with people. I know it's lonely. I know experiencers especially like to have have fellowship with other people and it's a very difficult situation but understand that there are controllers out there there are these hunters gatherers who basically want to aggregate people and then they'll they'll prey on you psychologically sexually monetarily and in every other way absolutely the truth and if you feel lost there's enough out there go to the big sites read a lot of the stuff that the writers are writing and and what appeals to you as logical sensible and true and true to what you may have gone through is where you should you know drift and and head if you're reading something that sounds too good to be true and is all happy and and ho 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 walk away walk away because if it is if it seems too good to be true usually it is in life it isn't true so you know that you just keep that in mind use your common sense and go where your mind tells you is closer to what happened to you um with people who write about things the way it happened in your life to you because i think there are different groups of people that have had certain like the harmless but frightening uh, abduction like that one man had. I'm sure there's many people that are taken the way he is right from his house and goes through what he goes through. And he would be the source I would go to if that was happening to me. Other people that have gone the way I have or you have would come towards us and we will tell them what we can. And, you know, mainly it's protect yourself, be cautious, and so forth and so on. But mainly, my, my point is, do not fantasize this thing about aliens as a Star Wars movie that's fun and great, and they're all happy little creatures, and it's the bar scene, you know, where they're playing the music and Whoa. dancing and drinking. That's not what it's about. Don't get sucked into that. That's childish. Don't be that way you know you, you you're not going to end up in a good place but uh once you get people thinking you, you know what's to say i'm not going to meet an eight foot size bug on you know the other side of that tree and not a gray because that's familiar to me yeah and as i always tell people i don't think you know what a gray looks like anyway i think that's a suit like any other space suit and you have no idea what's inside there so, you know, I don't like to frighten people constantly, but I have to so that they get their sense of fear and flee ready and in, in good shape in case they need it. I think we got about the final round here for this show, Chris, and I want to bring up <clears throat> for you to kind of bounce off me a little bit because um, this is a subject that really frosted my flakes to you say, uh Homer Simpsonism. <laughs> Homer Simpsonism. Um, this whole Roswell slide thing. Have you followed this at all? Oh, a, a little bit, and I just couldn't. Uh, I, I know. I <laughs> unfortunately, I mean, it's the I, high, highest profile story in ufology this year, 
And thank God for the people that got it right. Thanks to Nick Pope over at UFO Digest, Norio Hayakawa, who is... Norio is a complete cynic about the entire UFO experience, but in this case, at least, you know, he was on it. And uh, several writers as well... Uh, Nick Redfern was another writer who debunked this and deconstructed it real quickly. But this is ridiculous slide, which the first time I saw it, I went, what? It was like worse than alien autopsy. And when you poke behind the scenes of this whole Roswell slide thing, what they did was they released <clears throat> low resolution image of the slide and then decided to hold a conference down in Mexico on Cinco de Mayo. So guess what? Oh, it's a Tijuana holiday. Yes, let's go celebrate Cinco de Mayo. We can all drink. Get the tequila. And so these ufologists converge on Mexico to discuss in such scholarly ways a slide that could, could have only taken an expert about two minutes to debunk. No, it was not an alien. It never was. It was the mummified remains of a five-year-old boy. And the weird thing about all this is these guys strung this out right until the end to get people to this conference and never released the results of what um, a group known as the Roswell Slides Research Group had done. Um, this is really interesting. Um, how people keep showing up in this scene, Chris, and they just, it's just like a cast of characters that never go away. I'm trying to pull this up, this article. Um, first off, I'm sorry, but, you know, Rich Dolan, you really ought to know better. You used to at least have, you know, standards in terms of research. But our friends, uh, Don Schmidt and Tom Carey, who you and I interviewed several years ago, and oh. let's just say, what a pair of buttholes. Yeah. Uh, that's me. You don't have to be heard. No, that, that, I was very disappointed with that. Yeah. What a letdown. Well, it was Carey and Schmidt who announced um, on April 12th this conference and uh, proceeded to tell everybody that there was a placard on this mummy and the placard basically had was not able to be read by the naked eye. They claimed that they had had David Rudiak, David Rudiak uh, Studio Macbeth, and even the Photo Interpretation Department of the Pentagon. Does that even exist? <laughs> the Photo Interpretation <laughs> Department of the Pentagon, as well as Adobe, the largest software imaging company in the world, all tell them they couldn't decode this plaque. Well, our friends over at the Roswell Slides group uh, had before the conference because they had gotten an insider to release a high resolution copy of the slide managed to decrypt the message in five mi minutes using commercial off the shelf software that told everybody that this was the mummified body of a two year old boy at the time of burial the body was clothed in something cotton shirt Burial wrappings consisted of three small cotton blankets loaned by a mister and the names X'd out of San Francisco, California. So everybody involved with this came out looking like a bleeding ass, and yet they defended themselves right up until the bitter end. These guys get the uh, Golden Looney Award for this year in ufology. There isn't anything that's even going to touch us in terms of ludicrous. The, you're, you're absolutely right. Ridiculous. I don't understand why so many men are trying to make a full-time career out of this Roswell incident. Number one, I think we've all had it up to our eyeballs. There's not much more than can, that can be said on the issue. Anybody that's into the UFO scene knows it inside and out and is done with it. And there are millions of other sightings, many other crashes and things going on all over the world what is this preoccupation and determination to just stay at Roswell well Roswell we we know we got it something may have happened there yes you're right move on what is this fascination with it nobody cares anymore there's so many other things more important bigger more expansive than that why are they stuck on it you are bored us have bored us to death 
And I think it's because you don't want to either do other research or um, don't know where to go. It's a cottage industry. I'll, I'll just say this flat out especially in terms of Schmidt and Kerry, and I'm picking on you guys. If you happen to hear this and get offended or decide to sue me, well, don't try to sue me because I can prove everything I've said so far. But here's the thing. You can't spend 40 years of your life pursuing doggedly the same event and not feel vindicated. And that's what these guys have gone through. They've basically immersed themselves into uh, a one-note samba and they've danced round and round with this thing. What's interesting to me, Chris, and again, I'm kind of going after these guys because they need to be embarrassed. I mean, look, you can't make a career out of this. There's no money to be made in it. You may be able to sell books. That's getting to be a rather thin market, as you well know. Oh, yeah. You do it just just to do it at this point. You're not going to make any money. I'm getting ready to publish a bunch of them. I don't expect to, to be made rich or even, you know, afford Christmas by it. But I'm going to do it because I want my work out there. I don't want to die and just see it all go nowhere. But um, this thing with this, as you said, a cottage industry, making your life's work over this one incident, get over it. Get over yourself. It's been done. Believe me, inside now, nobody cares. And it's because you don't know anything else about ufology and you don't know anything about UFOs. We had those two men, plus others, sit and talk to us, down to us. Yes. When we are two people that are experiencers, which I don't even think they understand what that is, and have seen UFOs and crafts. Not just heard a story that happened in the late 40s. We've seen it. We've been there, done that, understand more than they ever will. And yet they will talk down to you because it's their method of control. And I say to you, you're good old boys. You're tired. Go retire. Go away. Move aside. And let some young smart ones get in there and maybe start figuring this out. But really, guys, give it a break. Yeah. One more side note to this, because this was interesting. At the time this Roswell Slides thing was going on, I was reading a book written by an author named Sherry Wilde called The Forgotten Promise. And the book is about her personal alien abduction experiences from the time she was about two years old. In 1982, I believe, Sherry Wilde met up with Don Schmidt and a group out of Chicago who were seeking people to undergo a form of hypnosis to Mm -hmm. uncover their UFO experiences. Uh, Apparently, Sherry Wilde went through two sessions, and before the third session, she was contacted by the ETs who told her, and this is almost a quote, you will not be going through this session. This is far too delicate a situation to handle be handled to further the career of a hack UFO investigator like Don Schmidt. Well, there you go. And that's in Sherry Wilde's uh, book. I'm not making this up. So, uh, well, there's another, another abductee who had the same reaction to people like that as I did and my group and you. Yeah. And the other guy that I listened on that radio show the two nights or three nights ago, they we all are telling people the same thing. No, 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 no. Don't do that. They are not qualified or or capable or in any way adept at going into your head because they don't know what was done to you. Listen, these and are these are telepathic multidimensional creatures. I, 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 nobody is qualified to do this. That's why you and I have stressed this from the first time that you and I ever talked. And when we did the interview on your real-time experiencers, Chris, it was one of the things that baseline agreement was do not do this. Do not go into hypnotherapy. Do not let anybody else digging around in, in your pre-conscious mind because it is a, a, an invitation for all kinds of havoc and disaster. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I have fears to things. And and I suppose maybe every abductee does. Like, I'm horrified of certain things that I don't understand. And, um, like, heights 
and and being in closed places i i almost go to berserk mm, i'm i'm terrified more, of yeah. bugs I, I i can't understand it i'm a you know grow big big adult woman and a little tiny bug and certain kinds over other kinds can almost make me start screaming i i, I panic and there's irrational fears that i don't understand that the others like me also have and I think some of this comes from maybe what we've been through. And you have to understand it's not a nice experience. I have a very close friend now who uh, is part of the par- paranormal whose own experiences were so hard and so difficult that this person is still fighting to get him out and deal with them. So and it's not, and, and this is something that's been going on for a very long time in this person's life. It's not something you play with. It's something people battle with, sometimes for a lifetime once it happens to them. So don't think it's, you know, don't go looking for it on a Friday night. You're better off getting pregnant or something. <laughs> but don't do this. <laughs> I think we've covered a lot of turf tonight, and I think when uh, people go back and listen to this, you're going to find that uh, we've sort of given you a working narrative for some subjects that we're working on. And, and Chris, I, I, I'm, I'm glad to have you back. I welcome you back to doing this on whatever level we wind up doing it, and I hope that uh, we'll, we'll be able to connect and do some other projects here in the near future as well. Oh, I want to do them all the time. I have a lot of things I want to talk to you there about, you including are... creatures and Bigfoot and, and shadow men and men in black and um, angels. And let me see, and I'm writing presently, my next article is going to be about religion, God, and aliens and man. I mean, there's a lot I've got to say. Like, it's been wound up in me while I was recovering. <laughs> and then you just rip the cord, and now it's going to come out. There we out. go. <laughs> Absolutely, we've sort of opened the uh, the shoots and let yeah. it, let it all roll out. So that's going to wrap it up for this show. I'm Randy Moggins, and uh, I have with me my friend Chris Holly. Welcome back. Thank you. Truth is Good out you. there; it's inside you. Keep digging for it. We we'll back with another show real soon. But I gotta face reality, yeah It was all a dream